Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Liam asks, what's next for Windows? Well, actually what's next for Windows is what's next for tablets, and not just Microsoft's tablets, but all tablets. What's next for Windows is really the merging of the browser and the desktop operating system. Um, we're going to start seeing applications that are developed to run in HTML with JavaScript for the primary interface. So we'll actually be seeing HTML5 and JavaScript replace what used to be part of the .NET framework and the Windows Presentation Foundation layer. Um, this is an interesting first move towards a place where our desktop lives in the cloud. By porting applications so that at least the user experience and the user interface run in HTML5 and JavaScript, we're getting closer to a scenario where what we see in desktop applications and what we see in online or cloud applications will be very much the same. This should allow us to get to a point where we do computation anywhere, which is I'm running a netbook and you're running a powerful desktop. Well, the netbook may not have enough oomph to actually run the desktop application to its full capacity, so in that case, you'd run in the cloud. But when you hop on an airplane, you'd be running locally, even if it was slower. So you truly get this best case scenario for where the CPUs are the cheapest. This is gonna make it a lot easier to do very rich applications on tablet devices and netbooks. And while ultrabooks are probably the way of the future, we always seem to want more power than what we can put into a desktop. And that starts to shape the way that we start to use the cloud computing stuff. You can get a longer battery life on your laptop if it doesn't have to do as much computation. And if you don't have to put all of that power into your, into your laptop that you're only going to use we'll say four hours a day, if you're working in an organization that is 24-7 or even has East and West Coast facilities, you can time shift where you're using those CPU cycles. So you can say somebody who is online at 9 a.m. New York time and somebody who's online at 5 p.m. San Francisco time will share some of the same cloud resources rather than having to put all of those resources onto the desktop. Microsoft definitely gets this. This is part of the reason that they're doing Azure. This is part of the reason that they are, they had started the WPF or Silverlight project that stood for Windows Presentation Foundation. They knew that the cloud computing was coming. They were hoping that they were going to own it with Silverlight. It turns out that HTML5 basically beat Silverlight, beat Flash, and so we're looking at everything starting to be a canvas on HTML5. And JavaScript seems to be the way that we then power that user interface. And some of the JavaScript may end up being compiled or no longer run as just in time. It will actually run as hardened code so that it's faster. But it'll still be authored in the same language as the JavaScript.